Today on the show, an invisible treehouse, showing less ads to get more green, and a way you'll be able to turn your camera into a time machine. This is Tech Space. Leave it to the Swedes. They built an invisible treehouse. Crazy sh**, right? Only it's not invisible, it's made out of mirrors. Okay, so leave it to the Swedes. They built a treehouse made out of mirrors. Now why make it with mirrors on all sides? Well, besides being a badass future treehouse, it also reflects everything around it, which makes it hard to see, especially for birds. According to its designers, they've applied a film that'll be visible to birds to help keep them from flying into it. If that fails, the treehouse is also equipped with an eco-friendly incinerating toilet. The tree cube measures in at four meters on each side, and as much as it is an art project, it's also awesome. It's one of six units in a tree hotel, which is located 40 miles south of the Arctic Circle in Sweden. It's in the middle of nowhere. And if you think spending time in a floating mirror cube is weird, check this out. Maybe the air is different there and they just all kind of go f***ing crazy. I don't know. Moving on, there's a website out there called historypin.com. It lets you take an historic photo and overlay it on top of the same place but in modern times. When you get it right, it's like a little window into the past. It's pretty amazing. And a little bit creepy. It's like looking at ghosts. Anyway, the problem is it's not the easiest thing to do. That's where the geeks from MIT and Adobe come in. They teamed up to figure out a technique they call visual honing that'll let them compare what the camera's looking at to other photographs and gives the photographer directions on how and where to hold the camera in order to come up with the most mind-blowing peaks into the past. Of course, the technology is running on a laptop connected to the camera, but in the future, they hope to make a version that can fit inside of the camera. In other news, making stuff for the internet that doesn't suck costs money. Who'd have thunk it? On a side note, you should go to textbank.com right now and click on the glorious ads. Anyway, the way most companies make money on the internet is by showing ads. Annoying, poorly targeted ads. And they rake in $25 billion a year doing it. Most of that money comes from ads placed by Google, who handles over 60% of the searches in the United States. But Microsoft and Yahoo are trying to change that. They have around 32% of the market share between them, and Microsoft is hoping to be able to get more clicks out of each ad. So how do they plan on making the ads more enticing? Well, it all has to do with how they figure out what ads to show you. An example from a technologyreview.com article goes like so. If someone searches for the word car, some simpler search engine algorithms might show ads for motor oil or snow tires. But with Bing using new techniques called Ad Predictor, artificial intelligence kicks in and figures out what other variables might come into play. For instance, if it's a weekend morning and it's summer, people are more likely to click on an ad about stuff relating to changing a car's oil than putting on snow tires, since that's when you'd want to change a car's oil. Of course, there's the bull privacy concerns, but seriously, if it gets rid of some of those annoying ads but keeps the cash flowing, I'm all for it. Speaking of keeping the cash flowing, did you head to textbank.com and click on those ads yet? I'll wait. That reminds me, if you want to get inside my brain and find out where some of the stories on the show come from, follow TextBank on Twitter. Also, on TextBank.com, you can view a full article for each episode that'll include links and more. Finally, we love reading the comments and getting emails, so hit us up with an email at mail at TextBank.com, and don't forget to subscribe to the show on YouTube. Thanks for watching. That's it for today's episode. I'm James Papadopoulos, and I'll see you next time.